At this point, with media globalized, it's attractive to have a bigger buttocks. Nowadays, everybody wants the bigger the ass, the better. <laughs> Sometimes it gets a little overwhelmed because of the disrespect. And I don't know if it was the water. Something in the water. The first thing I think I do when I put on a pair of jeans is turn around and look in the mirror. Like, okay. The ass is uh, you know, a little bigger that I'm taking. You go uptown and them jeans are automatic and it has a fucking ass. <laughs> I can't wear jeans. I have to have them tapered in the back. I can't wear anything that doesn't stretch. I really feel like down south got the fattest asses. New York. Washington Heights. Definitely heavy. Dominican Republic. I've seen a lot of fake asses like in LA and New York. Japan, not so much. Africa. I would say Africa. That's like that Mugambo booty. Like, you know, that, that, that just. People say Brazil. Brazil and Africa. Brazil. Brazil was crazy. The ass is always going to be the best way to describe an ass. Low trunk. Then in the 14th century, they called it the butt or the tail. Cakes, covers, wagon, dunk, bottom bag, caboose. In the 16th century, they called it the backside. Movies, maximus. Cheeks. Onion. Like, I, I use a lot of sounds to describe. No donkey. Mm. And then by the 21st century, the booty. Redonkulous. I guess. Donkadon? Trip, trip, triple issues. Dumper? Dumper. <laughs> Fortune cookies, you know what I mean? Excuse me? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's important to remember up front that all of us are the product of our genetic evolutionary history. For one thing, we evolved from primates. A female who has a larger development than other members of her group is likely to be mated with more regularly. And that's crazy. You, you, you know, it's, it's evolved over the years from gorilla ass all the way on to where we are now with Buffy the Body. You know, even if you look at Angel Mima, like the, the, the pancake bottle and all that stuff, like it was always that shape. I don't think women have the same attraction to the buttocks that men do. I don't look at a man's ass as being anything of importance, really. I like a tight booty on a man. I think a woman likes a fit guy, so if he has a bit of a bubble butt, it just has to be athletic. I don't want to look at a man's ass, I want to look at a woman's ass. Males are more visual than females. So from an evolutionary point of view, it makes sense for men to be attracted to women with an hourglass form. The ratio of the waist to the hips, ideally, is about 0.7. Okay, in Playboy bunnies and in, in the magazines, it's about 0 0.6, 0 0.8. So um, when, when uh, the ideal ratio that attracts a man is about 0.7 in, in our culture. Crack size has a lot to do with that as well. Um, the female's crack size is going to really determine how well it looks naked. Um, uh, ass can look great and big in jeans when you take it off and her crack starts halfway down her butt, then the ass is not going to look as big as it was. You don't see no crack, you know that, you know it's a little short. Generally, ideally, you would want the crack to start at the bottom of a female's back. If you have crack, then you can have ass. It's hard to have ass without crack. One of the factors that's made us more backside focused in the last decade is certain stars. Kim Kardashian, J-Lo. Definitely Nicki Minaj is the hot topic. And everybody was like, yo, that ass is so fat. Having a great rear end can even improve a woman's sense of power. Really, the two of them got so associated with ass with their careers. They have a really good relationship with their big ass. There was one award show, I remember her, she came out in some dress and one of my friends was like, damn! There was a story in the newspaper that her bodilicious backside uh, was um, insured for a billion dollars. Free, Buffy the Body. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Amber Rose. Tahiri. Tahiri is a, a big boy. Trina. Trina? Music and music videos have become a major vehicle 
to deliver images of the idealized body type. With Media Globalized, this has made a very big change in the culture. Body shape is, you know, so popular among a lot of people, especially young people, that a lot of people will do what it takes to fit into that ideal image. Any time that you create a diff an ideal as the beauty ideal that is difficult to attain, you're going to make that accessible to people of a specific class who have the resources to purchase whatever kind of augmentation it requires. A lot of uh, buttock augmentations have gone um, on in, 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 in Europe and in Brazil, South America and um, Venezuela and, and so forth. And it's kind of finally made its way here in terms of popularity. Silicon augmentation which is using a silicone bag or a silicone prosthesis or sort of form silicone uh, in, in a buttock by itself. The problem with that is that you can almost always tell it's there. I know what silicone feels like. If I want to do that, I'll go get two balloons, I'll fill them up with water, and I can drive around New York City and go and hold those all day. There was this girl I knew that got that, and it was hard. like like styrofoam, like, like your stereo system comes in. It is fat grafting. Uh, it's the method that I use. Fat grafting within the field of medicine actually is about a hundred year old procedure. It's very time consuming and it really is composed of two operations. One is a liposuction, a pretty extensive liposuction to make a difference in the buttock. Combined with the placement of the fat into the buttock and the surrounding areas and I really emphasize the surrounding areas uh, as being an important area uh, or an important concept because really the most important thing about body contouring is not making just something bigger uh, as an isolated correction but to reshape an area as it it relates to the areas around it. It was not really considered something as a cosmetic use until probably the late 80s. Having um, the, the advent of performing this type of liposuction under Totally Local has made it much, much safer. Um, the patients can go back to work um, much faster. Um, more fat in general can be removed and um, uh, pain is much less. I've gotten my butt done. I feel like that like enhanced my whole appearance and like my whole stage performance because when I didn't have the ass that I have, it was like okay, she's just another girl that can work the pool. But when I, I realized when I got my butt done that I made more money. Other people who don't have legitimate access to that kind of alteration then will find alternative means to gain that beauty ideal. And that can be potentially dangerous kind of back alley butt augmentation, which is less expensive, but also much more dangerous. The pursuit of the perfect rear end left a woman dead in Philadelphia. Police say the victim traveled from England to get an underground cosmetic procedure in a Philly hotel room. Well, Brian, authorities say Kimberly Smedley had her own fly-in, fly-out business, charging women thousands of dollars for silicone injections done right in her hotel room. It's a dangerous concoction that includes tire sealant being shot into people's buttocks. His word of warning comes on the heels of an investigation out of Florida, where police say a woman nearly died from the illegal injection. A girl told me she got it, did she wanted it so bad. And it made me cry because she said she wanted to look like me. But the lady put the stuff that come from Home Depot in her. That can move into your body, into your lungs, which about 20% of people die from it because then it moves around. I don't like the hard semen ass. I think a lot of them don't think. I would absolutely not go to somebody's garage <laughs> anywhere or be injected by anything that you can't show me paperwork on. The dangers that come along with that are that women will be willing to do risky things to attain this ideal body type. We see that with anorexia and bulimia, with people trying to be very slender, with people trying to have the larger, rounder ass, um, taking illegal butt shots by some woman that, who knows what her credentials are. I know girls that 
have to carry around little hoses to drain their ass because it'll blister, you know, because your body is trying to push out, you know, what, it, what it's not supposed to be there. I believe in if you're going to do something, you got to do it right. Make sure you do your research on it first. You know what I'm saying? Don't go to anybody, a real doctor. A certified surgeon. A licensed doctor. 10 years from now, what? You know, like, is it gonna be at a health risk? Or is it gonna be safe for you? Will it cause complications? Could it, it I mean, news-wise and reading up and doing research, it's people dying. People are, it's turning to like horrible situations. It's, it, it's ass gone wrong, ass gone bad. We need to make a subject for that because that's the thing. Like, if it, if it turns out and it looks good, hey, live, live with your ass. But if it turns out bad, then, then what? You know, I think that's the thing that would worry me the most about it. About it, about it, about it. The emphasis on the ass, on the buttocks, really shows us so much about gender, about sexuality, about race in the United States, about power and domination. I think butt matters, but only up to a certain point. Ass matters. I think ass matters if you're trying to be in videos. Ass does matter. Does butt matter? Not in the real world scheme of things, no. Absolutely. Socially, having a great ass can be important. It is, without a doubt, the most important part of the body. Yes, ass does matter. If social power is related to how well you fit the cultural ideal, and the cultural ideal is focused on, contemporarily, a nice round ass, then fitting that in whatever way can confer social power. Ass can change the world. If there's one message that I can give America through this documentary, it's that ass may be the most important resource that we have today. I would say ass matters to me now. You know, I'm seeking enlightenment. I want ass not to matter. I want to get beyond that. It was Lord Buddha's last struggle ass. Before enlightenment, it was a temptress. And ass mattered to him right before enlightenment. And all the great preachers and teachers have struggled with ass. Ass has mattered for more, some of the most deeply spiritual, um, the greatest contributors to humanity. These people have given the, the, their life to uplifting others. Stuck on ass. Happens all the time.